Hi, hi, hello. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen my last video, it's going over my design process and the historical inspirations for this project. But if you just want to see how I film the pattern and the mock-up, you can just watch this one. Um, I'm working on my Halloween costume for 2020. It's going to be a Plague Doctor look mixed with a 1660s court dress, hopefully. It's already October, so I'm really hoping we can get it done by Halloween. But I'm also going to try not to stress myself out because I can't really control things like shipping time for fabric and having a lot of schoolwork since I am in school right now. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what I'm actually doing in the video. I am working on cutting out the pattern from page 38 of Corsets and Crinolines. It's a, um, an underbodice from around 1680 and I have resized it on my computer. I made it a little bit wider and a little bit taller vertically so that it will fit my body since I am not the same size as this random person from 1680, but I will be talking about how I do that later in the video with the overbodice pattern. So I should note that this was originally a back closing bodice, but I switched it to closing in the front so that I can get in and out of it by myself. Once I get all the pieces cut out of paper, I roll out my muslin and I start cutting them up so I can do a mock-up. Um, and I make sure to add a half inch seam allowance all the way around. I usually add half inch seam allowance, which is my go-to. Although, if I were doing it again, I think for mock-ups it's probably best to add one inch seam allowance. So that if you need to add that extra, it just gives you a little extra fabric to play with. But it all worked out in the end. So like I talked about in my last video, the under bodices for these dresses were very heavily boned and gave that conical support, so if you were wearing one of these dresses, you wouldn't need to wear stays underneath. But for my first mock-up, I didn't have the under bodice to fit the shape over, but I did have a pair of 18th century stays. I've seen a few other costumers do this. Um, and it just makes sense, so you can fit over that shape without having to bone your mock-up. Um, these stays were made four or five years ago, so they are looking a little rough. They were my first historical costuming project, um, and I love them very much, but they don't fit me very well, and they are also completely falling apart. But they do give us that cone shape that we need for fitting this bodice. So while pinning it up, the first thing I notice is that it's very tight at the hips and the bodice doesn't want to close all the way. So I'm just ripping the bodice um, along the grain line there. It rips really easily because it's on the grain line. And even though there's not a seam there, I just gave myself a little extra room so I was able to close the bodice properly. And then once I got it all pinned up, I was able to look at the fit. I'm very happy with how this fits. I think there's only like a very mild alteration that needs to be made. There's some excess fabric in the side front. Um, I think it's because when I took my measurements for sizing up this pattern, I took them uncorseted. I mean, it's not a corset, it stays, but you know what I mean? It was just my natural measurements because I didn't feel like putting on the stays just to take measurements because they're hard to put on and I have to ask for someone's help. But anyway, so there's a little extra fabric, mostly in the bust, so I just pin it out and taper it in towards the waist, and that helps everything fit nicely. Also looking at the back of the bodice, there is way too much fabric here. You can see how it's kind of wrinkling along the waistline, and since they're horizontal wrinkles, that means that the fabric is just like way too long and struggling to sit nicely against my body. So what I do is I just pinch it up and pin it along this line and 
will take it out of the pattern for the next mock-up. I think this happened because I lengthened it in the front, but maybe I didn't need to lengthen it in the back, but I just lengthened it all the way around. Honestly, if you're grading a pattern professionally, you would look into all of these different things, but I just did it very quick. Um, length, overall length, overall width. So, and then I knew that I would have to fit it in the mock-up. And then the last thing I did was measure out how much extra fabric I had to add to the hip area in order to make sure that it was able to close and fit nicely. And for me, this was about three inches. Okay, so these are the alterations that I made to the underbodice pattern. The shoulder straps stayed the same. Um, the back panel is pretty much the same. I just brought it up. I just um, I shortened it on this line. The front panel, it looks the same, but I actually cut it down this front, the, the middle of it, and brought it in that way so that the center front and the side front seam would stay the same. The side panel has a lot of alter alterations. I redrew this curve based on the mock-up. I added in these two triangle wedges to add more room to the hips. And I also had to bring it in at the back seam, but still leave it the same length towards the front. So after making all of those changes to the pattern, I was really, really happy with the fit of the underbodice pattern. The only real issue is that it's kind of pulling a bit in the side seam, which means that there's too much fabric, which makes sense. When I put in the wedges to the side panel, I was struggling a bit with making it lie flat in the paper pattern. Um, so I think they just went too high up and I was able to pin them out here, which is great. There is still a bit of wrinkling in the fabric, but I think that's because this is supposed to be made of a really stiff, fully boned fabric, and right now it's just muslin. So for my overbodice pattern, I'm using Janet Arnold's Patterns of Fashion Week 1, and I'm pretty closely following this bodice from 1660 to 1665. So I thought I'd show you how I resize patterns. Um, first, I take it into Photoshop and check the waist and center front to neck measurement versus my own, and then adjust the image size, the width, and the height as needed. Um, and then I just take it into the Adobe Acrobat and print it out as a poster, which will tile the images and print them out so that it's full sized on individual sheets of paper. Okay, now it's time to tape together this pattern. Um, I always like to have the book handy so that I can look at the original pattern and make sure that my resized one is matching up in the right places. So I just put that off to the side and get started on laying out the new pattern. Uh, similar to the under bodice, which originally closed in the back, this one also originally closed in the back, but I changed them to close in the front so that I'll be able to get in and out of it easier. I did find a few examples of garments that closed in the front during this time, although I'm not sure if like a big court dress like this would. But this is a costume and I would like to be able to put it on and off by myself. The over bodice pattern is very similar in shape to the under, which makes sense, although there are a few more pieces. One part that I really struggled with was the side front. It comes together in a point, but it has to fit into a rounded curve, and I don't know, it just was a bit of a struggle for me. <laughs> okay, so trying this on, I was really happy to see that it was fitting. I'm always scared that when I do a first mock-up, it's just not going to fit at all. Um, but I did notice that the shoulder seams are way too big, 
it makes sense since I resize the pattern by making it wider and usually when you go up in size your shoulders don't get they don't grow in size as fast as say like your bust or your hips would grow when going up a pattern size but that's an easy fix I just pin them into place I also had to do a similar alteration as I did to the under bodice where I split up the side seam although again there wasn't really a side seam here so I just rip the fabric. So this pattern did fit, but it wasn't fitting quite as nicely as the first one. There was, It just wasn't sitting as smooth. Um, the first thing that I looked at was that the underarm was gaping a little bit, so I just pinched it in. I couldn't really reach the underarm, but then I realized that I could reach um, the seam right next to the underarm, and so I just pin that in, which was a bit difficult while wearing the stays. I had to twist in a way that the stays really did not want me to twist, so this was a bit frustrating. Um, but once I got that all pinned in place, I noticed that it still wasn't sitting very smoothly, so I realized since all of the wrinkles were going towards the center front, that meant that it was way too tight in the center front. I hadn't realized it at first because I'm used to fitting on a modern body and not this one which is just flat on the front. Um, so I made a mental note to add one inch to the center front seam. And then I turned my attention to the slit in the side and I thought it was really funny because I had to add the exact same amount as I did to the under bodice which was three inches. And I, which is weird because these two garments weren't like made for the same person, but I had the same amount more hip than both of them. <laughs> I don't know. And then I also looked at the back and there was a slight wrinkle along the center back seam. So I also made a mental note to add half an inch there. 